Marvel is a brand that spent 80 years telling more stories about more characters than one could ever hope to finish. Its sprawling multimedia empire that includes movies, shows, games, and yes, still comics, has maintained a vice grip on pop culture, with its lore reaching unimaginable depths that have inspired entire generations of true believers. But there are some stories that have never been told. Stories that were announced, solicited, and in some cases, even fully completed before they were trapped in the negative zone, permanently affecting the plots, cast, and even canon status of certain characters. On today's Lost Media Monday, I want to go over some of those astonishingly untold tales, and highlight seven lost and unfinished series from Marvel Comics. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and assemble in the comments with any other Lost Media topics you'd like to see me cover, as we go over some of the biggest comics the world might never get to read. Ant-Man Max Marvel's Max imprint was launched in 2001 as a way to tell more mature stories aimed at older readers. One of these series was Ant-Man Max, set to star a down-and-out Hank Pym returning to his original superhero identity. Written by Daniel Way, who you may know as that guy that ruined Deadpool for the entire 2010s, this four-issue story would have had a depressed Ant-Man infiltrating an international spy ring, unaware that he's being used as a pawn in a much larger plan. Covers and solicitations were released for all four issues, with a monthly release schedule running from late 2003 to early 2004. But ultimately, the series never materialized, with Marvel never offering an explanation. One rumor for the series' quiet cancellation stated it was the result of Fallout for Max's controversial Nick Fury series, which featured a scene where Fury chokes a man to death with his own intestines. The image not only caused George Clooney to back out of a proposed film role for the character, but much worse than that, it kind of bummed out Stan Lee. After the controversy, it's likely Marvel wanted to tone down what was being represented in the Max line, and for reasons we'll never know, they may have felt Ant-Man took things a little too far. The much more likely reason is that the series was cancelled because of an absolutely unhinged interview with Daniel Way. Speaking to The Pulse in 2003, Way decided to give some impersonal form questions some overly colorful answers, stating that he only wrote the series because editor Axel Alonso had asked him to, hinting at a jokingly shallow understanding of the character, and listing Hank Pym's weaknesses as, quote, insecurity, egomania, and a totally gay outfit. Finishing off with some other borderline jokes that he decided were just fine to link to Google searches for Ant-Man, the Marvel Comics character made for children. Way's interview definitely didn't share in Marvel's desire to tone things down, and they may have shelved the series just to avoid any more bad publicity for the Max line. Ant-Man, along with Way's Deathlock Detour, would end up as the only two unreleased series for Marvel Max, and given the company's reluctance to bring up Hank Pym's controversial past, much less Daniel Way's, it's likely both series are set to stay in the Marvel vault for a long, long time. Victor Von Doom Victor Von Doom was a planned four-issue miniseries exploring the history of the classic Fantastic Four villain during his early college years. Spearheaded by artist Becky Cloonan, with writing done by Nick Spencer, the story would have seen a young Doctor Doom battling through hell to save the soul of his mother. The series was described as a horror-adventure comedy set in the 1980s, and was announced in August of 2011 for release later that year. But less than one month before the first issue dropped, the series was cancelled. Websites speculated this was linked to a series of layoffs that happened at Marvel the previous month, which included Alejandro Arbona, the comics editor. But Marvel's senior vice president of publishing, Tom Brevert, revealed on his forum spring that the cancellation was actually a result of missed deadlines, stating, There were problems getting the work completed on time, and given that it was a pedigree project that likely wasn't going to do huge numbers, I didn't want to have to sausage it up among multiple creators in order to make the ship dates. Better in my judgment not to do it in the first place. Covers for Victor Von Doom's first three issues are available online, and a tweet by Nick Spencer implies it was fully written, meaning there's some version of the story that exists in a completed state. In a post-Stranger Things world, the idea of a teenage Doctor Doom traveling to hell in the 80s could definitely find its audience, but unless someone is willing to face the wrath of a Disney legal team and leak the finished scripts, it's a story that will probably never get that chance. New Warriors. Remember Safe Space and Snowflake? These psychic twins created an online frenzy when they were revealed as part of a 2020 reboot of the New Warriors, set to debut later that year. 
The team also included Screen Time, a meme-obsessed teenager hit by internet gas, B Negative, a kid who just can't stop morbing out, and Trailblazer, a girl with a pink shirt and a magic backpack with a name meant to imply she's never afraid to take on an adventure. Created by Daniel Kibblesmith, who most famously served as a writer for Stephen Colbert, these new characters received instant, universal backlash, with some denouncing them as an attempt to pander to the social justice crowd, and that same social justice crowd denouncing them as tone-deaf caricatures of the people Kibblesmith was aiming to represent. The newest New Warriors were supposed to star in a sixth volume for the series, set for release in April 2020, until a teeny tiny little virus put the whole world on sick leave for a while. When production resumed at Marvel, the New Warriors series wouldn't be resolicited, which not only robbed the team of their starring series, but also their role in the Marvel Universe, with none of Kibble Smith's characters having made a canon appearance in any released comic over two years later. Due to the overwhelmingly negative reception to the characters and series, Marvel probably won't let them see the light of day anytime soon. Not that most people have any problem with that plan. Chris Claremont's Phoenix In 1986, classic X-Men writer Chris Claremont was planning a mini-series focusing on the character and origins of the Phoenix. Starring Rachel Summers, one of Cyclops and Jean Grey's many children from the future, the six-issue run would have featured Spiral as its main villain, with Franklin Richards and the Power Pack also making appearances. It was set to be more psychological, seeing Rachel deal with her place in a world she doesn't quite recognize. The miniseries was mentioned across different X-Men comics, and was confirmed to receive art from Rick Leonardi and Dan Green. Not that Dan Green, though. It should have been me, not him! Despite the large advertising push and multiple mentions across multiple years of comics, the series never surfaced. Years later, editor Joe Casada was asked about Phoenix in his Cup of Joe column, and found out it was shelved due to its complicated story, with Claremont trying to balance a narrative that simultaneously affected continuities set in the future, past, and present. While the first few issues were likely scripted, Casada stated that less than a single comic had been penciled before the series fell apart, leaving us with little to potentially find from the project. Daredevil Bullseye, The Target Kevin Smith is someone who's no stranger to Marvel or the lost media world. The Clerks creator has entered into multiple comic-inspired projects that never finished or even really started, including Superman Lives, Batman the Widening Gyre, and ongoing work for Black Cat and Spider-Man series that never materialized. But one of Smith's biggest drop balls is the intended four-issue miniseries Daredevil Bullseye, The Target. Starting in 2002, the story took place around the third in-universe anniversary of Bullseye's murder of Karen Page, and saw the villain receiving a hit contract from a pair of Middle Eastern agents. Unfortunately, that was all readers would get, as Smith lost track of the series when work started on his 2004 film Jersey Girl, a movie that would coincidentally star Ben Affleck, who had just finished starring in Daredevil. While Smith insisted he was still working on the series, with issue 2 getting a soft release date of 2006, series artist Adam Kubert, who had already replaced Glenn Fabry from issue 1, would take a job with DC Comics, leaving the series without an artist or any priority at Marvel after its long delay. The target would never be finished, with Smith calling it the series that never should have been. He'd go on to lament ever starting it, stating in the book Writers on Comic Scripting that he had rushed out the first issue story in order to ensure he could use the character of Bullseye before Daredevil writer Brian Michael Bendis, with the target intending to show the first meeting between Daredevil and his archenemy since the murder of Karen Page. The target mentioned in the series was also eventually revealed to be Captain America, and while the Daredevil Bullseye story would never come close enough to completion to see how that played out, the idea of a Captain America assassination would come back a few years later, making real-world headlines after the character was killed at the end of Civil War. Empire's Cancelled Tie-In Series 2020's Empire was a massive Marvel crossover event, seeing Earth's heroes side with a newly formed pre skrull alliance against the Kotati, a race of vengeful aliens led by a guy that looks like someone tried to make a sexy Joker in World of Warcraft. Due to its large scale, the event had a number of tie-ins and miniseries that stretched across the Marvel Universe, showing how some of its most notable heroes were affected by the conflict. Unfortunately, the pandemic forced Marvel to scale back their Empire initiative, canceling over a dozen comics tying into the event. 
These included Empire-branded miniseries for Ghost Rider, Wakanda, Spider-Man, Thor, Storm Ranger, Squadron Supreme, and a single issue of Strike Force. A total of 16 issues between these series would never see release, and because of the limited time nature of major events, and the short shelf life of tie-in series that are usually pretty forgettable, it's unlikely Marvel has plans to put them out anytime soon. The Punisher vs. Barracuda When Marvel's Max imprint launched, few characters made more sense for its adult-oriented focus than the Punisher. His series for the line, written by Garth Ennis and Greg Hurwitz, practically redefined the character, allowing him to exist in a gory, over-the-top environment that let Frank Castle thrive in his element. It also introduced one of the Punisher's most memorable villains in the form of Barracuda, who's appeared in multiple alternate realities, but never the main Marvel Universe. It would take over 15 years for Marvel to try and change that, announcing their goal to bring Barracuda to Earth-616 with 2020's three-issue miniseries, The Punisher vs. Barracuda. Written by Ed Brisson, with art by Declan Shalvey, the series was due to start releasing in October of 2020, with collected editions being announced for 2021, but you can probably guess that none of that ever happened. While the original delay may have been due to the coronavirus pandemic, its complete disappearance since then may have been caused by something else entirely. By the end of 2020, and further into 2021, real-world incidents of gun violence and police brutality were a hot topic within American news, and The Punisher was in frighteningly close proximity to these debates. The character's skull logo had been used for years as a symbol of police fanaticism and general right-wing culture, and its presence within these communities reached a fever pitch when Jerry Conway, who co-created created the character, began sounding off about its misuse, claiming that the Punisher's iconic skull emblem was meant to represent the failure of the justice system, rather than allegiance to it. The character's involvement in the political crossfire would eventually lead to the Punisher being revamped in early 2022 with the new logo and arsenal, having Castle drop most of his guns in favor of swords and some new ninja skills. So by the end of COVID delays, Marvel was left holding a Punisher series that stood in direct opposition to the route they were taking the character, and they may have decided to leave it completely unreleased, rather than open themselves up to any sort of backlash. With no word on a potential release, and with the Punisher moving away from plots and enemies that would involve anyone like Barracuda, the series isn't likely to come off the shelf anytime in the near future.